You hatch in a shallow, weedy bay, a tiny, translucent sliver of life. You are an orphan the moment you are born. There is no father to guard your nest, no mother to guide you. There is only the cold, indifferent water and a deep, burning hunger. And the closest, easiest meal is the slightly smaller brother wriggling right next to you. Wait a minute! Who are you? Your first kill is not a desperate act of survival. It is a cold, simple calculation of instinct. You are an Isox Maskinungi, a water wolf, and you are born to kill. But your brutal education has just begun. As you and your surviving siblings navigate this nursery of weeds, a great green monster appears. A giant largemouth bass, the arrogant king of the nearby dock, is on the hunt. From your perspective, as a one-inch long fry, he is a leviathan. He attacks the school, inhaling your brother by the dozen. You don't flee in open panic. You do what you were built for. You become a ghost. Your long, torpedo-shaped body and mottled, camouflaged skin allow you to slip, unseen, into the densest part of the weed bed. You become a needle in a haystack of green. You press yourself against a weed stem, motionless, as the monster decimates your family. You survive. Alone. Years pass. You are no longer a frightened fry, but a formidable predator. Your life is a patient, silent vigil. You spend days motionless, a perfectly camouflaged torpedo waiting for a mistake. Your first major hunt demonstrates your lethal efficiency. A large suckerfish grazing carelessly near your weed line becomes your target. The attack is an explosion, a blur of violence. Your jaws clamp down, and here is your ultimate weapon. Not just the teeth in your jaw, but the needle-sharp, backward-facing teeth on your tongue and the roof of your mouth. Once something enters this prison of bone, it never leaves. And from the weeds, you watch the dramas of the lesser creatures. One day you see them, a nomadic pack of walleye crossing the vast, dangerous expanse of the open lake. From their perspective, it is an epic journey of survival. From your perspective, it is simply an opportunity. You glide from your cover, a silent, dark shadow moving with purpose. You don't attack the group. That would be inefficient. You select a single, healthy walleye the biggest from the middle of the school. You strike, grab your prize, and retreat to your dark lair before the rest of the school even understands what has happened. Years of successful solitary hunting have turned you into a true giant, the apex predator of your domain. But the throne is a lonely, contested place. One day, a challenger arrives. Another massive muskie, a battle-scarred brute nearly your own size, intrudes upon your prime hunting grounds. This is not a hunt. It is a battle for the crown. The fight is a display of primeval violence, a brutal clash of jaws, a maelstrom of terrible fins and raw power. You are two are titans you locked in a war Why that has only running? one rule. The winner stays. After a grueling battle, you emerge defeated, running away from the intruder. You are wounded, exhausted, and humiliated. It is in this moment of weakness that a new kind of horror finds you. A sea lamprey, an ancient, jawless vampire of the deep, senses your exhaustion. It attaches to your flank with its suction cup mouth, its rasping tongue drilling into your flesh. You thrash violently, but you cannot shake it loose. This parasite will remain attached to you for over a year, a constant, draining passenger, a living testament to your vulnerability. You, the mighty predator, who can kill a duck and fight off giants, are helpless against this disgusting, blood-sucking worm. You are forced to live with this constant torture, a slow drain on your strength, and a permanent wound to your pride. After more than a year of parasitic torture, the lamprey finally detaches, leaving a deep, ugly, circular scar on your flank, a permanent reminder of your vulnerability. You are free, but you are weakened. As the seasons turn and the water begins to cool, a deep, primal hunger takes over your entire being. The fall feeding frenzy, the biological imperative that commands you to gorge, to regain the strength you lost, to build up fat for the coming winter. Your caution is drowned out by a ravenous, predatory rage. You become a killing machine. You hunt with a new level of aggression, culminating in the ultimate display of apex power. You explode from the depths and snatch a duck from the surface. You are the king, and you are feasting. But this heightened, reckless activity does not go unnoticed. 
The fall frenzy for you is the peak season for the obsessive giants of the surface. A bizarre parade of monstrous lures invades your home. Giant rubber creatures with writhing tails, noisy abominations that churn the surface into a froth, and jointed wooden fish that clack and swim with an unnatural broken rhythm. Driven by the fall frenzy, you interact with these intruders more aggressively than ever before. You see a brazen challenger. You stalk it, a silent shadow of death, following it all the way to the boat in a display of pure intimidation. You get a look at the angler, this persistent creature, and then with a contemptuous flick of your tail, you vanish back into the deep. You believe you have scared him off. You do not realize you have just fueled his obsession. The story is no longer just yours. A garage in the dead of night. This is a war room. A massive, detailed map of your lake is tacked to the wall, covered in handwritten notes, depth contours, and red circles marking your territory. Every sighting, every follow. On the walls hang dozens of giant, grotesque lures, a terrifying arsenal of wood, plastic, and steel, each one a weapon in a decade-long obsession. For this man, this is not a hobby. It is a personal quest to meet the ghost of the lake, to meet you. His ritual begins before dawn. He does not check the news. He checks the barometric pressure in the moon phase, searching for the perfect astronomical window to hunt a legend. He does not simply choose a lure. He selects a weapon, a handcrafted lure he paid a fortune for. Hours later, he is on the water. The hunt is a grueling test of endurance a physical manifestation of the famous saying, the fish of 10,000 casts. For hours, he cast the lure, a heavy one-pound beast, over and over, his movements a practiced, monotonous rhythm. It is a dedication bordering on madness. He is not just fishing, he is laying siege to your castle. Finally, he positions his boat perfectly, just off the edge of your deep weed line. He yes. makes the perfect cast. The lure lands silently, and begins its flawless wounded dance through your domain. He has done everything right. You see the lure, fueled by the aggressive frenzy of the fall, you accept the challenge. You glide out from the shadows, a silent, menacing ghost, and begin your signature intimidation tactic, the follow. You trail the lure, your massive head just inches from its tail. As you approach the boat, you prepare to turn away, the victor of another psychological battle. But this time the demon plays a new trick, the lure doesn't leave. It panics. The angler plunges his rod tip into the water and rips the bait into a sharp, desperate figure eight pattern. From your perspective, the creature you were dominating has just had a seizure, a final, panicked attempt to escape right in front of your face. It is the ultimate trigger, a biological kill switch that bypasses a lifetime of caution. Your brain short circuits. You attack with unrestrained, murderous intent. The trap is sprung. The battle is like the explosion of power. After an epic struggle, you are subdued and pulled into the net. You are subjected to a strange, humiliating ritual, measured, photographed, and held by the victorious giant alien creature of the surface. Then, you are returned to the water. You are free, but you are not the same. An invisible wound, your protective slime coat, your biological armor against infection has been damaged. You have survived the battle, but you are now vulnerable to an army of invisible enemies. You sink back to your dark lair, but as a traumatized, wounded victim. You are free, but what is freedom to you now? So what's the next legend we should explore? Drop your suggestions in the comments below. And if you felt for the plight of our haunted monster, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and hit that hype button for the next video. Thanks for watching.